All right, friends. Um, it's Friday. It's almost 9 p.m. But uh, I guess there's no time like the present, so let's do a garden tour. Um, I did pull up a bunch of onions. So I have them sitting here on a mat. This is curing. So you need to let them get some air and dry. You don't brush the dirt off. You don't do anything. You just pull them up and put them out in the sun. Um, so as you can see, I've got some nice white ones and I've got some Spanishy type ones and then a few red ones over here. And let me show you. So your onions are ready to pick when they fall over like this. So the tops, so this one beside it still standing up nice and tall. This one below it, the top has fallen over. So typically that's what happens, the tops fall over um, and then you know it's time to pick. You can leave them for a few days after the tops fall over. Like this isn't a huge onion, but apparently it's gotten to its point in life where it's done. So that's all you do, pull it up, all this dirt and everything, leave it on there and just leave it in the sun. So that's onions. So we still have quite a few in here. Um, even though we've harvested a whole tarp load. Um, all right, this is kind of neat. <clears throat> this is the loofah flower. And I've noticed it only blooms at night. It only opens at night. During the day, they're closed up. So they look a lot like, see right beside it here? That's like a melon flower. So they look like a melon or a squash flower, but they're a little bit different shade of yellow and they only open in the evening. Now with the loofahs, look at that. Something snacked on it. That's not gonna turn into a loofah. So, but that's not good. And I had like another one down here that looked like it had flowered and was gonna get pollinated and then it just like fell off. <clears throat> So I've never grown leaf up before. I have been like very good to keep a lot of compost down at the base here and keep the soil quite rich. But if you guys have any tips about growing loofah, I could use it. This is another one trailing over. It gets mixed in with the beans and then it sort of tops out here for now. Um, talking about the beans, I've already harvested a lot. This is cool about these climbing beans is that like you get, you know, four or five to a cluster. So it doesn't just like produce one bean like the bush beans do. Um, these are bush beans, let me show you. <clears throat> so these are bush beans and these are bush beans. These ones are flowering. So with a bush bean, like, yes, you get fruit, but you get like, a bean and then it flowers further down and then you get more beans um, but with these climbing ones so I've got more along the fence here let's go see them with these climbing ones you tend to get like look at that clusters of them so this is win-win one I'm growing up so I'm not taking up as much space in the ground, like that little patch right here, takes up a fair amount of space. And out of that patch, I'm probably getting as many as I will climbing up with one plant. So I'm saving space and I'm maximizing yield. So yeah, totally gonna grow my climbing up beans. I mean, I'm still gonna grow, sorry about the pain. I'm still gonna grow bush beans, because I mean, they're purple and yellow and beautiful and, you know, but I'm really loving this like freak green bean that showed up in my garden last year. I don't know if you watched the other video, but I'll tell you the story. So last year I was growing bush beans like this um, and one of them started climbing and I was just like, that's kind of cool. And anyway, I tried them. They were great beans and so I thought I'm gonna let a bunch of these go to seed which I did 
and then I planted them all over the garden this year just as like an experiment right so like this is one of them actually there's two there there's like three in here climbing up and then again along that wall those ones there those are the climbing beans they're freaking fabulous so excited about that um other highlights to show you oh this is a highlight so these are tomatillos same with the little yellow flowers and so what was happening these plants have been in since i don't know before june so i was getting a lot of flowers and then a lot of the little green buddy things but like nothing was happening i wasn't getting any fruit and just within the last week or two i started seeing bees on the plant and now look at the difference do you see that see the size of that so that's clearly one that's been pollinated and now there's a few of them so look here's another one so instead of just being i don't know that size this little like dinky thing it's this size so it's clearly been pollinated and it's clearly going to produce a tomatillo so that is actually very exciting um what else we have squash let me show you oh hey hi there spaghetti squash so we have a little spaghetti squash here that's to me very exciting um possible chance of vine borer. I cut it off as soon as I saw it and hopefully it didn't get into the stem but I guess we'll see. If you see a sawdust mark and a hole in your squash stem that's a vine borer and it's a problem. Also with squash guys be sure to check the underside of your leaves. And quite often if you have something called squash bug, they will have laid little eggs in amongst, like usually right up here where like the vein is, where the veins meet, you'll find little eggs. And if you find that, squish them immediately. Um, yeah, what else do I wanna show you? Peas are still blooming. It's been fairly cool for us. So I'm still getting peas. Um, I have been harvesting a lot of them and they're actually starting to bloom down below again. So I'm starting to get a second crop down below. My intention was to pull these out because I have a squash here that I want to grow up and take over this pea area. Um, but I'm gonna leave the peas a little bit longer. These guys here, this is usually how you know they're done. See how they start turning yellow like this? Like, so some of them are quite spent, but a lot of them are still looking pretty good and producing, so. We'll leave that for a little while. Carrots have filled in. Um, I'm trying to see if I can show you any. Oh yeah, hi. Hi, carrot. Welcome. So there are carrots in there. And the cabbages are starting to maybe head up a little bit. I hope. I healed them up. So I mounded soil around the bases of them. <clears throat> and I also put more compost around them. So hopefully we'll get a couple of cabbages. Um, here's another squash. Here, spaghetti squash. So yeah, um, I thought I put all cucumbers in this bed, but apparently one was a spaghetti squash. And that's cool, we'll take it. We'll take all the food we can get. Um, we do have a cucumber in here. Let me show you. Hi, cucumber. Little baby one. Potential for another little baby one here. It's still flowering. So provided the flower gets pollinated, we might get a cucumber there. So hopefully we'll start getting some cucumbers. The dill is all going to seed. We've harvested some potatoes. The nasturtium plants look fun and bright and lively. <coughs> um, <coughs> sorry, I mostly grow nasturtium because it reminds me of my grandmother, but 
every part of the nasturtium is edible. So the leaves are full of vitamin C, the flowers are like floral and pretty to be added to like salads. You can eat them raw, they smell delicious. And once they go to seed, you get these little seed pod things that you can also pickle. Um, and they taste a lot like a caper. So everything about this plant is fabulous. I did save leaves last year and dried them. And you can grind them up and add them to like soups and stews. You can make a tea out of them. So yeah, nasturtium guys, freaking love it. It's awesome. Um, this is cool too. So these things here are ground cherries. I've also never grown them. And look under here. Look at those things. They look like Chinese lanterns kind of, but anyway. They are supposed to be um, sweet. They're supposed to taste like pineapple. So that'll be cool. Um, all these climbing beans. These will be dried beans, you guys. So like, where is it? That little tiny bean pod. I just let it go. I don't do anything with these till like the fall when the vines die back. And these will get quite large um, and they will have dried beans in them so quite chunky meaty size they're about an inch big dried beans um and then yeah we just use those for soups stews it's a protein source it's freaking delicious um it's been a good year for the beans like there are a lot of beans on them in previous years i've had a lot of flowers and not a lot of beans um but they're are quite a lot of little beans setting on these plants. So I'm very pleased about that. Uh, let's just take a quick look at, oh, there's pepper, it's worth noting. I've been picking a few of them to encourage it to keep blooming. Um, so yeah, there's peppers. Garlic is gonna come out soon, like probably tomorrow soon. Um, and, oh, lettuce, let's just go look at some lettuce it's pretty like look at this you guys you got the red merlot okay this is a romaine it's starting to almost bolt so what i do in these cases is say i'm not going to eat it today i will pull this out right at the base roots and all and then you put it in a sandwich baggie like a plastic sandwich baggie with some water elastic band to the bottom of the bag and put it in your fridge and it's like having a living lettuce in your fridge. So it lasts like a week or two that way because there's only so much lettuce you can eat. And the problem is if I leave it and tomorrow it's super hot, then it continues to bolt and it goes bitter. So you're better off to pull it out now. Like I say, roots and all. Um, sometimes you can cut lettuce off at the base. I'll show you over here and it will do another thing. Like it'll come back. So like this guy I cut off at the base and you'll see, we'll probably get like two or three more little lettuce heads coming off of it. But with these romaine types, when they start bolting, you're better to just pull it straight out of the ground, roots and everything. Like I said, put it in a little sandwich bag with a tiny bit of water, wrap an elastic band around it and put it in the fridge. It will last at least a week, probably two. Um, so yeah, yeah, see this, this romaine's doing it as well. Oh, actually, this one's actually going to seed. So, missed that one. That's the thing, you guys, like one day it'll look like this and then the next day it's like, pachoo, shot up. So you gotta really walk around your garden every day. Even if it's just like in the morning with your cup of coffee, in the evening with a beer or a cup of tea, like. You really got to do it every day. These are the noodle beans. So they've made it all the way up to the roof. Well, one of them has. Um, others are like, you know, getting up there. So we should start seeing some red noodle beans on here. I'm guessing in the next month. So that'll be something to watch for. That'll be kind of cool. This is my all time favorite lettuce, you guys. If you are looking for a lettuce to grow, <clears throat> it's called Muir, M-U-I-R. 
it doesn't bolt in the heat. It's super crunchy, like crisp, crunchy leaves. Like, let me pull one off to show you. Like, they're so good. And like I said, it doesn't bolt in the heat. It's so good in the heat. Um, and yeah, it retains its crunch, doesn't get bitter. Like it's my absolute most favorite lettuce in the world. Grew it by accident last year um, and loved it so much that I'm like, it's in my repertoire for life now. Like life, <laughs> like near lettuce, game changer. Um, okay, let's do a quick tour. Peppers I've been picking. Um, they're not doing great in the pot. In years past, they haven't done well in the garden. This year they're doing well in the garden and not doing great in the pots. I say that, but there are like a lot of shishito peppers and stuff on here. Um, got one cayenne over here that's turning colors. Look at that. Hey, cayenne. So that's cool. We've got um, some tomatoes down here. This one's starting to get a blush on it. Look at that. This guy's called Sunshine Bumblebee. So he'll be mostly yellow with like hints of pink. Um, hibiscus. This is our hibiscus plant. And it does have little hibiscus flowers on it. It's still a bit early. They typically didn't flower for me last year until almost like September, October. So it seems to be healthy in here. Loving its life. But yeah, you guys, um, that's the garden. Oh, look, the little fairy lights are starting to turn on. See that in the back along the fence? Pretty soon they'll all turn on. I've got some along this garage here too, and they go all the way along the fence. Anyway, I guess if the fairy lights are turning on, it's probably time to call it a day. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Have a lovely day. Bye.